Okay, today I'm going to cover how to set up a Mattermost uh, server so that you can have team chat and team collaboration through the Mattermost open source project. Uh, I'm using a DigitalOcean VPS. Uh, it's pretty easy to set up. That's one of the things I like about it. I'm actually using their one-click install for the Docker installation. So I've actually already got Docker on the system. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, DigitalOcean or you'd rather just run it off of your own server and need to install Docker, it's really easy and on the Mattermost uh, site they've got the installation uh, instructions even for that so not not too hard to do it's just a few few extra lines of code you should always uh, do a few things first so I'm logged into my to my DigitalOcean repo here um, I'm, I'm already sudo so uh, I'm gonna do apt get update if you're not uh, the root user then do sudo apt get update and put in your user password we're just gonna run through the update process here uh, once that completes um, this is just important because you want to make sure that you've got all the updated uh, repositories and things like that, all the updated uh, um, files and things like that ready. Um, you're, you're going to do the upgrade process also. I've already done this, so it probably won't have anything. Um, again, if you're not sudo, just set it up as sudo. Yeah, so there's nothing new. I've already got that going, but it's important to do that kind of stuff. Um, so next, uh, really all you have to do once you've got the Docker stuff installed, it's, it's one command. So let me, <coughs> excuse me, let me get over here and I'll run that command real quick. Um, and again, that, that just makes it super simple uh, to get in and set this up. So when you're, I'm, I'm running this on Ubuntu, it's really super straightforward to get that set up. That's one of the nice things about it. And really, I'm just going to paste that command right in here. So you see, we're going to do Docker run. So that's just telling it to run this uh, particular uh, Docker container. Then we're going to give that container a name. It, it can be any name you want. It doesn't have to be Mattermost-dev, uh, but we're going to give it Mattermost-dev. And then dash D means run as a daemon, so run in the background as a service. Uh, so that even if I uh, cut off the, the SSH connection, it'll continue to run. And then I'm going to publish. Uh, in this case, I'm just telling it what uh, ports that I want it to run as. So from the outside, I'm actually actually connect to the 8065 port. And then through the system, that's going to get forwarded uh, to the 80 port in the Docker in the Docker server. And then at the end, I just tell it which, uh, which Docker hub uh, image to use. So I tell it here, Mattermost, and then it's slash uh, platform. So once I hit enter, it's going to do all of its work. It's going to go and pull down all the different stuff from the Docker uh, installation so you can see it's downloading. A lot of those things download really fast just because they're small parts to the to the whole. Um, some of them take a little bit longer, but it's, it's moving pretty quickly. Um, again, the nice thing about DigitalOcean is they have really super fast speeds. Um, so it's not something like you're trying to run from your local uh, uh, internet and, and where you may not have the same kind of speed capabilities. So once it does all the downloading, you see it starts extracting and it gives you the pool complete whenever that part's done. So it does all the extraction here. Uh, Mattermost is pretty quick install and then you see there it's finished. It actually gives you at the end a digest hash and it gives you all the information that you want to know. Um, so we can just do a couple of things here, docker ps dash a. So right now you can see it's already started and we could have actually just done it with docker ps and you can see the same thing. So you can see um, it's not quite spread out enough but um, basically, you get the container ID. That's an important thing to know and be able to copy um, the name of the container, the image, um, all that kind of stuff. So you can tell what's what's running and where it's running, stuff like that. And and right here, um, you can see that it's running. It's really running localhost, but we'll hit it from an outside IP, um, 8065, and then it's pointing to port 80. So pretty pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a uh, just a browser window. And we'll drag that over here. Um, and we'll just go to that IP address somewhere. Uh, looking for it. Give me just one second. All right here. And that's going to redirect us. But there you see. So, first time I bring it up, and, and actually I could have gone to it without this part so really this is what you do you go to your IP or whatever your your web host name is and then port 8065 and when you hit that it's gonna load up and you're gonna come up to this screen just like we did it's asking for an email address um, you can put in anything you want at me.com so whatever your email is because you're gonna become the administrator for that and it says create a team um, now if you're already if you're already done you can hit find my teams and that'll actually bring you into the to the existing uh, installation you'll notice that anytime you go to this URL it's always going to bring you to this screen so you really want to um, make sure that, that you're not uh, trying to go back into Mattermost through this URL it'll actually ask you about the URL you want to use for your team 
Um, so here it just says make sure this is your actual email. It doesn't send you anything. It just says make sure you typed it right. So um, in this case, we'll just say yeah. I'm going to give it a team name, and this is um, Ted Imperial. How about that? And then we just pick, pick a username. So this is fine. This is um, Master Admin. And a password. And we finish. And then it creates our team. So once it does that, you can see you get logged in. And they give you an option to skip the tutorial, but it's worth going through. So you can see a few different things here. And it's not a, it's not a bad little tutorial. It's only three, three little slides. Um, and then you're kind of done. Um, so you will notice that you get this little icon here that's kind of popping. So when you click that, you get little hints on how to use the system. You can tell it not to show me that anymore. You can say OK. And then you'll notice it jumps around to tell you about different parts of, of the system. And then again, we've got a little wizard that tells us kind of different things about Town Square and the off-topic sections. These are kind of the generic sections that get created automatically. They're channels that everybody, every user will have access to. Um, you can go in and lock that down, I think, through the uh, settings. So up here, I haven't set up any email yet, so it's giving us a little message. But here we can see a little bit more information that we've got the main menu, and we can get into our settings like that. Um, and then I think that's it for the tutorial. So, so up here you can see here's our team, here's me, and here's the different things I have access to. If there were more, it would it would give you more channels, but in this case there aren't. So we can either create a new channel. Um, so let's do that. Let's just create um, Imperial Team Imperial Group. If I could spell, that would be awesome. And then just chat for us. How about that? Create the new group. And now we've got another new group in here that we can be a part of. Um, down here is pretty easy. You write a message. And when you submit it, now anybody that's in that team can see your message. And you see you get a little icon here. And here you can set up uh, attachments and add links and things like that. Um, here you can add a private group. So if you want to have a group that other people didn't have access to and you want to invite certain members, this is where you set that up. Direct messages, you can set up direct messages to other members once you have other members in the system. Um, so pretty standard. This is a pretty standard part of the interface that, that you'll see in most of the stuff that I review. So here, account settings. So right off the bat, you, you can go in and change and, and set a lot of things about your personal account. You can set up security, um, password stuff, notifications, how you want to receive those notifications, the appearance of the of the forum. So if I change it here to dark, you can kind of see that they have different themes. That's kind of nice. Some of the some of the solutions that we'll look at don't have a lot of easy theming, so this is really kind of kind of nice. And then you can even do a custom theme. It looks like here. Um, oh yeah, so you can go in and set all your colors and things like that. So that's that's not bad. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty simple here, pretty light. Um, and then you can just save that when you're done. And then the display. So again, display font. That's kind of nice to be able to set that up. Um, clock display. I mean, everything here is really a lot of, a lot of settings for the, for the individual user, which is really nice. Um, send messages. All kind of information here. And then once you're done with that, you can just close out. Um, next thing you have here in the menu is... Um, so basically invite new members. This is an important one. So if you want to have a lot of members from your team, you can invite them this way instead of having regular just registration. Um, here you can do get a team invite link. So you could just send out a link through email to let everybody know to come join. Um, and then you can log out. So then down here we've got team settings. So this is another one that's pretty important. Um, so you can get in here, set up your team name, you can change it, allow anyone to sign up um, from the login page, basically you can say yes or no on that one, I mean pretty simple. Include this team in the team directory, so if you don't want this team to be able to be um, searched or, or viewed whenever people, people click that uh, more groups thing, you can just turn that off. Um, inv you know, invite code, so you can regenerate an invite code for somebody if they need it. And then down here you can import teams from Slack, this is in beta right now, but um, a pretty nice feature because if you think, you know, a lot of people are paying for Slack and, and they, they finally decide, you know, we could do this with something that's less expensive. We could serve it ourselves. We're just not a big enough team, but we're just just over the size of a free Slack account. This might be a good option and you've already got your Slack stuff set up. You can import those settings. 
So pretty nice, uh, pretty nice feature there. Uh, if we keep going down here, we can do manage members. So here you can see I'm the only member. So if you had more members, you'd see those in the list. And then you can go here and you can do um, change their roles, things like that, and 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 set them up. So this one's this one's interesting to me because you can make team admin, make member. So you can kind of change their their role that way. But um, so far, I haven't seen a lot of settings for what these roles really indicate, other than they may be a team admin or a team member. So I'll have to go through and kind of dig into that with some different accounts and see what it does. Um, and then down here you get system console. So this, I think, yes. So this is really where you get all of your settings. And again, it pops up just to tell you the email stuff isn't set up. Um, so the listen address, um, 80. You can change that port, basically. Uh, maximum link, uh, login attempts, you know, before it locks somebody out. Um, you, you can change that to be something, you know, fewer or more, depending. Um, so your, your developer keys, if you have anything like that, you may want to put those in there where you can link up other stuff. Um, enable incoming webhooks, you know, true or false. So again, this is basically turn it on or turn it off. Um, so you can set up webhooks, that's kind of nice. Um, same thing on the outgoing webhooks. And then uh, overriding usernames from webhooks, so on and so forth. So you get a lot of, a lot of really nice development kind of things here. Um, security alerts, this is always important for ed system administrators. Um, session length and, and the number of days so if they log in and they just want to stay logged in you can set that number of days where it keeps that session going so that's kind of nice um, so for mobile devices you can set it separately for web and separately for mobile devices and then you know um, session length for SSO in days so again just another setting for your session links and then your session cache in minutes so that's nice so you get a lot, of, a lot of settings there and then we can just kind of go all the way down the the uh, thing here so you, team settings again you can change a lot of stuff about this um, I'm not gonna go through every setting or else you guys are gonna be bored to tears SQL settings so again this runs on MySQL I'm a little concerned about how fast it's gonna perform running on MySQL but since it's probably only one or two tables and it's really searching when you're doing those those searches it's probably not gonna be too terrible um, I, I would think it only be a few tables and and really you know searching should be pretty fast even even in a MySQL type database um, when it's when it's that limited, um, so you can say, do you want to allow sign up um, with email? Yes, no. Um, send email notifications. So this is where you would kind of set that stuff up once you turn it on. Require email verification. So again, if somebody tries to sign up with an email, send a verification email to make sure it's actually going to go to them. Um, so you can send notifications, set all that stuff up. You can set up your SMTP for the email. Of course, you have to set all those things up. It's not just. Uh, uh, zero config type thing you need to you need to have that information to set it up um, so a lot of settings in here this is laid out really nice easy to follow um, so file settings because you can't upload and, and save files and link to files things like that um, so you want to have a lot of set settings in here for that kind of stuff and you do there's a lot of good stuff there um, log settings so you can do a lot of logging which is great again system admins love logging just because it gives a lot of information when things aren't quite going right especially on projects that are open source or are in you know kind of in early stages you want to have that logging on so you can provide feedback to the open source group so super important um, so rate limit settings so this kind of says how many you know how many messages can people send over a certain amount of time so that you don't get a spam bot or something in there running it's just spamming the crud out of your system so this kind of limits that where, where people aren't just going crazy and sending silly stuff too um, you can set up privacy settings here a little bit. So show the email address, yes or no. Show full name, yes or no. So if it's your team, probably fine to show your email address. If you're doing this more as a public kind of chat thing where, where random people can join, you may want to turn that one off. Um, you know, global uh, GitLab settings. So if you're using GitLab, um, you, you can go in here and set that up. So it's kind of nice to be able to share that. That's kind of a plug-in, I would call it. Um, GitLab's pretty pretty nice software um, if you don't host things on GitHub. Um, and then you've got legal and support settings, so where you can go in and set your terms of service, all that kind of stuff. So a lot of really nice settings in here. Um, so teams, so you can add teams here. You can see your team, and then for each team, you can see users that are part of that team and statistics about that team. So you can see how many messages, all that kind of stuff. This is nice. Again, for system admins wanting to see how the system is being used, how well it's being used, things like that. Um, but but anybody see the users again? You can change that role there. I didn't really see anything that tells me what these roles can do. I didn't see a place to set what that role's capability is, so that's one of the things that I'm kind of wondering about. It'd be nice to be able to set up different roles and assign those to different users, but I'm not sure that's baked in here yet. Um, 
So we can switch back to our basically Imperial team settings instead of being inside the system console. And you'll see that this sidebar is going to change back here in a second. And we're back to our chat window. And, and this is going to keep popping up until you set it up, obviously. So a little bit annoying there in case you didn't want to set up any kind of email stuff, but um, not bad. So, so this is it. I mean, this is Mattermost. It's pretty straightforward. They've got some theming. They've got some stuff like that. Um, really, really not a bad looking solution. I'll dig in a little bit and I'll see what I can do with this with multiple users and see what those roles do and then I'll I'll add a little bit to that. All right, so taking a look at this, it's pretty nice. There's a lot of good setup that I can do here. Uh, so first of all, you'll notice that I'm in a different uh, group or a different team that I've created. Um, I did this just to, to kind of test this out. So I've set up a user and I've set up the team and there's there's no other teams here still just like before so you notice before I created a team called Imperial I don't have access to that team um, so or, or that channel um, I don't have access to the users in the in the other um, setup either so I just kinda wanted to show this that that I can still actually go in here and send a message so message to my team and when I send it it shows up um, but if I go right here and I log out <clears throat> and then I go back in as my other user so you'll notice right here first it's, it's gonna send me to that team so I've got to go back to the other team um, and when you ever, when you go to that space it asks you to log in so of course you gotta go change this and the password you set so this is going to log me back into the original team. So that's kind of nice. You can actually set up multiple teams without running multiple instances if you want to, and they don't have any kind of crosstalk. Um, that's actually that's actually a pretty sweet feature right there. Or if there is a way to make them crosstalk, I haven't found it yet. Uh, but but you'll notice that I have um, I can do direct messages, and I've got another user that I set up in here, Bill. So I can do a direct message between me and Bill here. Um, how are things going? And that should have been a question. And then on the other end, Bill can answer. And so you can see when I go over and set up his bill, I can actually answer that. And the message comes in just fine. Um, no, no big issues, no problems. So uh, I haven't really messed with the search yet. And... So nothing comes up. That's that's a little disappointing because if I look for that, maybe it's because the at symbol is there. Uh, maybe if I search that way, nope, I still get no results. So yeah, I mean a, a little disappointing on the search, uh, only because you'd expect that any kind of information where you've been involved in a discussion would bring up things where it, it has that information there. Um, but overall, not bad. It, it's a nice setup. It looks, it's easy to use. It's easy to set up. There's still, like I said, a lot of configuration that you can go in and do here. So, um, pretty, pretty useful overall, especially if you've got a small team and it's just for for simple team collaboration.